Want to know about the optional argument feature in Terraform 1.3? Then you've come to the right video. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to Terraform Tuesday. Today, we're going to be talking about this fancy new feature, the optional argument in Terraform 1.3. Before we get into that, two quick things. One, I want to mention that Pluralsight is still running their Cloud Happy campaign for the rest of the year, which provides free training and resources to get some of the hottest certifications out there, including the Terraform Associate Certification. So if you're interested in learning for free, check out the link that is down in the description. The other thing I want to mention is that I have a relatively new podcast. It's called Chaos Lever. And every week, Chris, my co-host, and I dive into an interesting tech topic with a, a skeptical eye and a little bit of silliness mixed in. So if that's of interest to you, that's also down in the description. Now let's talk about the new optional arguments and how you might use them. Before we get into the optional argument and its syntax, I think it's important to take a step back and talk a little bit about input variables and some of the restrictions around data types in input variables. Now, if you're already super familiar with this topic, you can just skip to the next chapter in the video where I get into the actual use of the optional argument. But if you're less familiar with it, I think this is important context. So there's two important things to know about input variables. The first thing is that if you define an input variable in your Terraform configuration, then at runtime, that input variable must have a value. Now there's a bunch of ways to pass a value to an input variable. You can do it through a tfvars file. You could do it through a command line argument. You can do it through environment variables, or you could even let Terraform prompt you at the command line when you run something like a Terraform plan. Now, if I'm writing a configuration and I don't want you to be bothered with supplying a value, within my input variable definition, I can set a default value for that input variable. Now that works for the input variable as a whole, but it doesn't allow you to make certain elements of the input variable optional. Which brings us to the next important thing about input variables, and that's data types. When you define an input variable, you also have the capability to set a data type for that input variable. And that data type could be a very simple one, like a string or a number or a Boolean. You can also construct more complex data types, something like a list of strings or a map of Booleans. It's kind of a weird one, but you, you could do it. You can also make use of the object data type, which allows you to create custom objects that have well-defined structures inside of them. Now, that sounds a little esoteric, so let's look at an actual example. Now, what you're seeing here is a variable definition that someone sent to me via Twitter because they were having a little trouble figuring out how to define it and then also how to pass a value for it. Let's explore how this one is structured. Now, the type starts out with list, so this is going to be a list of elements. What are the elements in the list? Well, each one is going to be an object. So there's that object keyword I was talking about. And for the object, we are going to define the value, well, the arguments inside of that object. And for that, we have a bunch of keys here. We've got hash key, global name, non-key attributes, etc. And each of those arguments has a data type associated with it. So for instance, our global name is a string, our read capacity is a number. Now, the thing about defining an input variable this way is if someone's going to provide a value for it, they have to provide values for every argument inside of that object definition. I can't just specify hash key and global name and leave the rest of it blank. Terraform's gonna throw an error for me. That's not a great experience, especially if you're writing modules for somebody else to consume. So in Terraform 1.3, they added a new optional argument that allows you to make one of these are one or more of these arguments optional. Now let's dig into optional arguments and how they work. Optional arguments were introduced in Terraform 1.3 and they're really targeted at folks who are writing modules for others to consume. A lot of the times in those modules you have to create these 
custom objects for input variables, and you might want to make some of the arguments optional. Previously, the only way to really do that was instead of defining those values as part of the input variable, you would create additional input variables, one for each optional argument you wanted, and then take all of those and turn them into a local value inside your configuration. That's not a great experience for the consumer and it's not a great experience for the person creating the module. So instead, the optional argument was introduced. Let's take a look at the syntax of the optional argument and how it works in practice. Okay, we've got an example configuration here in Visual Studio Code. If you are interested in finding this configuration, just go to my Terraform Tuesdays GitHub repository. The link is down in the description, so you don't have to write it down. Now let's take a look at the first input variable I have defined here, and it's a taco object, because of course it is. And it is of type object, and I am setting three arguments inside of that object, meat, cheese, and salsa. Now meat is defined in the traditional way meat equals string. So this is gonna be data type string and it's a required argument. I can't skip it. The next one, cheese, I'm using the optional keyword to define the data type. That makes this argument optional when I'm supplying a value. This one has two arguments inside of the optional keyword. The first one defines the data type for this argument. So cheese is of data type string. The second value in here is going to be the default value for this argument if one is not specified. In this case, cheese will be set to cheddar. So if I define an input value of meat equals chicken and I don't specify anything for cheese, I'm gonna get cheddar cheese on my taco. The third one is salsa. And for this one, it's also an optional and string data type, but there's no default value assigned. So what does Terraform do if I don't supply a value? What it does is it sets the value to a null string. So it's going to set the value to the null version of whatever data type we've defined this argument as. Null string in this case. Let's take a look at how this is evaluated based off of passing it some values. In my terraform.tfvars file, I am specifying meat equals chicken and cheese equals jack, and I don't have a value for salsa. So let's see what Terraform does with that. I'll go into the Terraform console. And in the Terraform console, I'm just going to evaluate what the current value is for var.taco object. Go ahead and grab that, paste it down there. All right, so unsurprisingly, cheese is equal to jack, meat is equal to chicken, and salsa is set to string null, which means it's going to be a string null type. Okay, that's kind of what we expected. If instead I make some changes here, I set a value for salsa and I comment out cheese, I'm gonna have to exit out of the console and go back in to refresh the values that are loaded from TF bars. Let's go ahead and see what's in our taco object. Now, exactly what we would expect. Cheese is now set to cheddar because that was the default value. Meat is chicken and salsa is fire. Okay, so that's how it works with a default value or a non-default value. Now, why does it set it to a null of type string? The reason is because if we take a look in our main configuration, we can actually evaluate whether or not a value is set in our variable. So I have a conditional expression under locals that looks at the value of var taco object dot salsa and checks to see if it's equal to null. If it's not null, I just use the value that's stored in var dot taco object dot salsa. But if it is null, I'll set it to mild. The value that's stored in var dot taco object dot salsa and the value if it returns false have to be of the same data type in this case, they're both strings. One's the null string and the other one is the string mild. That's why it has to set an actual data type beyond just null. Okay, so that is the basics. A question that sometimes gets asked is, can I nest optional arguments in my input variable? And the answer is yes, of course you can. So let's take a look at the next input variable I have defined here and it is a burrito, why not? 
So for my burrito, I'm setting the type equal to object, and I've got three top level arguments here. Meat is equal to a string data type. My rice is optional, but it has to be a string, which means if I don't pass a rice value, then I don't get any rice in my burrito. And the last one is toppings. Maybe I don't want toppings. Maybe I just want a meat and rice burrito and that's it. You know, whatever. So at the top level, toppings is set to optional and then the data type is object. And inside that object, I'm defining some additional arguments inside of toppings. Now, the way that Terraform is going to evaluate this is it's first going to check and see if a value has been specified for toppings at all. If it hasn't, then it's going to set it to a null object because no object was specified. If I do specify any value for toppings, then it will evaluate what's inside of that object. In this case, I've got two arguments, cheese and salsa. They're both optional in nature. One has the default value of cheddar and the salsa has no default value. So let's see how this one is evaluated based off some settings. Looking in my TF vars for my burrito object, I'm setting meat equal to pork and rice equal to brown. So let's take a look at that variable and see what's stored in it. All right, as expected, meat is pork, rice is brown, and toppings is set to null. And that little slash star after it that says object lets us know that the null is of data type object. Now let's go ahead and add in some toppings. So I will remove the commented out value here, and we're gonna set our toppings cheese equal to blend and salsa to tomatillo. And once again, gonna exit out of the console and go back in to refresh the values that are loaded from TF bars. And I'll check and see what's in my burrito now. Excellent, my meat is pork, my rice is brown, and my toppings are cheese equals blend and salsa is tomatillo. Now, if we go into the cheese here and comment that out and exit again and go back in. Now, if we look at it, the cheese should now be set, let's take a look, to cheddar because it's using the default value that is defined for cheese. So now we can see that the nested optional arguments do in fact work. Now, the last question that I tend to get about this is, am I able to use the any data type in my optional arguments. And first of all, I'd recommend not doing that, but second of all, yes, yes you can. Now, for those who might not be familiar with the any data type, the any data type is not actually a data type. It is a way for Terraform to evaluate what value was specified at runtime and turn that into the data type that is being used. So if we look at the final input variable I have defined here, it is taco with toppings. It's type object. It's pretty much the same as before, except for toppings, I have it set as optional and the data type is a list of any, which means that it's going to be a list, but the elements in the list could be any data type that's specified in here. Now, because it's a list, they all have to be the same data type, but whatever value I specify for that list is going to be valid. So let's take a look at what's stored in there right now. In terraform.tfvars, I am not specifying a value. So right now, no values being specified and there's no default value being specified. So if I evaluate what's in taco with toppings, right now it's to list null and it helps me by telling me of dynamic after that. So right now, Terraform has no idea what's going to be in that list, just that the data type inside the list is null and is dynamic. Now, if I go ahead and uncomment this portion here and set it so there is a default value that is a list that includes lettuce and tomato. Let me go ahead and exit and go back in. There we go. And take a look at what's stored in there now. Now it's a list with strings in it. Now, because I've set it to any, I don't have to adhere to a list of strings. In fact, if I go into my TF vars and uncomment this topping, which is actually a list of lists, and then let's exit out here and go back into Terraform console and paste that in. 
It's now a list of lists instead of a list of strings. So will the any data type work? Yes. Should you use it? Probably not, because actually parsing this inside your Terraform configuration is going to get confusing real fast. So you can do it, but you know, probably don't. All right, that was a quick overview of the optional argument that was added in Terraform 1.3. This is gonna be fantastic for anybody who is out there writing and publishing modules for others to consume, because it really gives them the ability to implement these complex variables without a bunch of weird logic happening in the background. Now, if you are someone who's writing modules out there leveraging this new feature, please remember to go into your module config and add a requirement of Terraform 1.3 or newer so the people consuming your module aren't going to run into errors. All right, that is going to do it for today's Terraform Tuesday video. Thank you so much for watching. You may have noticed there was no video last week, and that's because I was at HashiConf Global giving a talk, which was great. The conference was great. The talk went great. I'm going to publish that talk on this YouTube channel in a couple of weeks once it's available to uh, me. So keep an eye out for that. In fact, you could like and subscribe, and then you'll see it when it comes out. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now. So like I said, I went to HashiConf Global last week and it was fantastic. I met a bunch of people that I've only corresponded with over the internet and also some new friends. So really excellent conference. One person I got to hang out with was Brian Krausen and he made these little 3D printed Terraform icons. Absolutely fantastic. And who knows, maybe if you go to the next HashiConf Global, you get one of these sweet icons. All right, that's it for me. Bye.